Hello everyone. This is a review for our final exam and as mentioned you should take the preliminary final exam as many times as necessary uh, to prepare for the final exam. So you have to take it at least once and it's a mirror image as mentioned of the final exam. So take it as many times as you like. My math lab will um, only keep your best score. So wish you the best of luck practicing and getting ready as well as on the final exam. So these questions are going to be typical of what you're going to see. Um, it's basically an instance of the preliminary final, which is the final exam. So first set of questions are solving linear equations. Um, let me recopy this. 5x minus 4 equaling 56. And we know that to solve a linear equation, we need to get all the x's on one side, everything else on the other. So do as many steps mentally as you like, but showing it explicitly. We're first going to isolate the x. The x is only on the one side. So we're going to isolate it by adding 4 to both sides of the equation. And 4 is cancel. We bring down the 5x. Tuck it right in next to the equals. Do the arithmetic. 56 plus 4 is 60. And then finally divide. So this is our classic two-step process. And dividing both sides by 5. We get that x is 12. And you can show a check if you like. That's optional. Okay. Here we have the variable on both sides of the equation. And again, let me recopy it here. So I could show the steps nicely. And first thing to do when the variable's on both sides is to choose a side to bring the variable to. And typically people like to bring the variable to the left-hand side, but the general rule to avoid negative coefficients is to bring the variable to the side where the coefficient is greatest, which in this case would be the left-hand side. So I'm going to transpose the 5x by subtracting 5x from both sides. Notice how we line them up. That is the like terms. And adding the two equations, 7x minus 5x is 2x. We bring down the 23. And that equals 17, because the 5x now goes away. And now that we have the variable on the left, we'll bring the numbers to the right. So basically it becomes a problem just like letter A at this stage. We're going to transpose the 23, zero it out, however you think of it. Subtract 23 from both sides. And there's our addition bar. Bring down the 2x, tuck it in next to the equals. Do the arithmetic, 17 minus 23 is minus 6, and then finally the division. So we're dividing both sides by 2, and I'm just going to put a little double arrow there, and that gives us x is negative 3. Okay, so now we get to a more complicated situation, and the first step is to remove parentheses. So you might recall that when solving a complicated linear equation, the general strategy is to first remove the parentheses by the distributive property. So this 2 gets, so we'll recopy the 7y. The 2 gets distributed. So 2 times, this is a 1y that's understood. And that would give us 2y. And then the 2 distributed to the negative 6 gives negative 12. Okay, the closure of the parentheses stops the distribution. And now we're going to distribute the 3 times again. This is understood to be 1y, so that's 3y. And the 3 distributed to the positive 1 makes plus 3. And then we recopy negative 2. Now, before we start to transpose, that is, juggle things around from one side to the other. Worst case scenario should be where we have something of the form of a variable and a constant 
equal to a variable and a constant. So similar to example B. And if there's more than two terms on either side of the equation, we can, can, we can combine like terms on either side. And so we have to treat the equals as a barrier. And on the left, we can combine the 7y and the 2y. So those are like terms on the left to give us 9y. And then we would just recopy the negative 12. And then that's equal to, on the right-hand side, we'll have to recopy the 3y because there's no other y's. But we can combine the like terms of the positive 3 and the negative 2 to get a positive 1. And now we have a situation like example B where the variable's on both sides. So choose the side to bring it to. I'll choose to bring the variable to the left by subtracting 3y from both sides. And that gives us 6y. Minus 12 equaling these y's go away and bring down the 1. And then <clears throat> since we brought the variables to the left, we want to bring the numbers to the right. So we'll transpose the negative 12 by adding 12 to both sides. Zero it out, however you like to think of it. 12's go away. We get 6y. Tuck it right in next to the equals. And 1 plus 12 is 13. And then finally the division. Okay, so here we get a fraction. Y is 13 over 6, and that's the best we can do. Um, so fractions, certainly as we know, can be answers, and we prefer, we prefer improper fractions over mixed numbers, so 13 over 6 would be the best way to report the solution. Okay, so here's a word problem. And we might want to sketch this. It's a 33-inch uh, piece of steel. We're going to slice it into three pieces. And then there's some conditions. Such that the second piece is twice as long as the first piece. And then the third piece is one inch more than five times the length of the first piece. So let's first draw, just make it a steel bar, I guess, and we'll slice it into three pieces. We'll call the first piece X, and then we've got these two other pieces. It really doesn't matter about the scale, um, but the point is that the entire distance here is 33 inches. Okay, now let's first claim our variables. We'll let x equal the first piece. And then it says that the second piece is twice as long as the first piece. So that's just simply 2x. So it's going to be a second piece. So if you wanted to draw it in here, that's going to be 2x. And then the third piece is one inch more than five times the length of the first piece. Well, the length of the first piece is x. So five times that would be 5x. And then it's one inch more. So therefore, 5x plus 1 would be the third piece. And so we could label it in our diagram as well. And the nice thing about the question in my math lab is they actually, besides giving you the scenario verbally, they actually give you the picture filled in so that really all you have to do is know that these three lengths of the three pieces 
add to give you the total length. So therefore, x plus the 2x, and then plus the 5x plus 1, has to equal the total 33. And now we need to solve that equation. So again, before we start our transpositions, combine like terms. On the left, there's all these x's. That's a 1 in front of that x. So there's 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 5 is 8. So therefore, 8x, tag along the plus 1, is 33. And then to solve for x, we have the variable on one side, so get the numbers on the other. Transpose the 1, subtract the 1, zero it out from both sides. We get 8x is 32. And then finally the division. So we divide by the coefficient, 8. And we get that x is 4. Now, we do have to go back. <clears throat> I'm just going to say the first, I won't write the word piece, but the first one is x, which is 4. But see, we have to go back and determine what the second and the third piece are as well. The second was 2x, which is 2 times 4, or 8. And the third piece was 5x plus 1. So 5 times 4 plus 1, that's 20 plus 1, or 21. And the neat thing is that you could verify if you add the 21, the 8, and the 4 together, that it combines to give you the total of 33. Okay, moving on. <clears throat> Here's a literal equation. So you might recall these, where... We only have variables involved, and <coughs> we want to solve for one of the variables, but in terms of the other variable. So there's many ways to think of this. You could show it algebraically or mentally, and I'll show both. Algebraically, if we have A, I'll just recopy it, equals P plus PRT, we want to solve for R, we're first going to subtract the P from both sides of the equation. But sometimes students think of this as being awkward because you really can't do anything with A minus P. You just have to actually rewrite it as A minus P equals PRT. And then to undo the multiplication that's happening between the P, the R, and the T, we're going to have to divide. So we would divide the PRT by the P and the T because we want to leave the R. And then we get that A minus P over PT is equal to R. So that would be our solution. Now if you want to think of this mentally, it's basically just undoing. We're going to undo the P by subtraction. So this A minus P equals PRT becomes, oops, I'm sorry, A equaling, I'm going to copy the original, A equaling P plus PRT. Um, if we're subtracting this P, it becomes A minus P equals PRT. And then we undo the PT by division. So this PT is divided 
and we have the same answer. A minus B over PT is equal to R. So your choice as to how you want to think of it. If you um, want to show it algebraically or just do it mentally, either way is appropriate. Now, when solving inequalities, it's the same way as solving equations, but there's one special rule that you might recall. And here's a situation that I'm going to show. I know most people are comfortable bringing the variable to the left. Inequalities behave the same way as equations except for one special rule. I'm going to subtract 7x from both sides, line up the like terms as we normally would. So we get minus 2x minus 7, keep the less than, 7x's go away, that becomes 3. Now if I brought the variable to the left, I need to bring the numbers to the right. So I'm going to add 7 to both sides. And so now we have negative 2x is less than 10. But remember the rule is, because the next step is to do the division by the coefficient of x. And the only rule for inequalities is if we multiply or divide by a negative number, the sense of the inequality is reversed. So since I'm going to divide by a negative 2, this less than becomes greater than. And then I divide the 10 by negative 2 as well. And then that gives me x is now greater than 10 divided by negative 2 is negative 5. So that's the only rule for inequalities. Now if you brought the variable to the right, you wouldn't have to switch the inequalities. You'd end up with the same answer, except it would look opposite. It would say negative 5 is um, less than x, which would mean the same. So... Moving on, here's an equation graphing. Just want to complete the table and then plot the points and graph the equation. So if you want to show it literally, for x equaling 0, we have, okay, this is the equation we're graphing. y would be negative 3 times 0 plus 6. 0 plus 6 is 6. So 0 and 6 is a point. And if you wanted to write the ordered pair of 0, 6, that's great. Um, let me do the next value here for x equaling 1. And anything you want to do by inspection is fine. When x is 1, we have negative 3. 1 goes in for x, so negative 3 times 1 plus 6. So that's negative 3 plus 6, or 3. So 1, 3 is a point. Write it as an ordered pair if you like. And then finally for x is 2. Now two points determine the line, so that's actually sufficient. But... The third point is usually used as a check, and it's good practice. So, y would be negative 3 times 2 plus 6, or negative 6 plus 6, or 0. So, 2, 0 is a point. So, let's plot those on the graph. So, you know, you'll be using my math lab, so hopefully you remember how to use the graphing tool. And I'll label my axes, plot the point 0, 6. That's 0 in the x, 6 in the y. That's our y-intercept. Plot the point 1, 3. So 1 in the x, 3 in the y. Right there. And then the point 2, 0. 2 in the x, 0 in the y. Right there. And those three points should line up. Here's my straight edge. And it looks like they line up neatly. And again, my math lab has the unique graphing tool. And I usually label the equation.
Okay, so moving on, we want to continue graphing here. And we're going to graph this equation by finding and plotting its intercepts. So if you want to set up a table, you can. Uh, the table of values would be x and y. And by the intercepts, remember what we mean is the y-intercept is when x is 0. So if we let x equals 0, okay, there's our equation. You really don't need to show the substitution because we're putting in a 0. That term just is going to vanish. So you would get negative 4y equals 32, because obviously 8 times 0 is 0, so there's really no need to show it. But if you want to, that's fine as well. And then we're going to divide by the coefficient of y, so dividing by negative 4. And y is negative 8. So that's our y-intercept. 0, negative 8 if you want to write it as an ordered pair. And then the x-intercept is when y is 0. So we can fill in a 0 in the y and show the substitution. So now we're going to let y equal 0. So again, this gives us the y-intercept when we let x equal 0 and the x-intercept when we, we let y equals 0. And again, there's really no need for a substitution. We go back to this equation, replace y by 0, and y is basically gone, so we get 8, 8x equals 32. Um, if you just cover up the y, you can see that. But if you want to show it explicitly, 8x minus 4 times y is 0 is 32. I just said we get 8x equals 32. And then our division, so 8x divided by 8, 32 divided by 8, and x is 4. So 4 and 0 would be the x-intercept. So to our graph, again, I'll label the axes, x and y. y-intercept was 0, negative 8, so we're down here. And the x-intercept is 4, 0. Right here, and that's all we need is those two points. My math lab again has the special graphing tool, but there's my straight edge, and there's your straight line. <clears throat> and again, I always like to, after I graph it, write the name of it. Okay, so continuing. We now have some work with straight lines that are going to require formulas. So our slope formula. So remember the slope formula is given to be, so you have to memorize this, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, where the ordered pairs represent the x1, y1, and the x2, y2, respectively. Now, some people like to, as a crutch, maybe label the points x1, y1, x2, y2, and it doesn't matter which way you label the points, if you labeled the negative 3, 2 as x2, y2, and the 6, negative 3 as x1, y1, the mechanics of the mathematics will work itself out, so just make sure you memorize the formula, it's the change in y over the change in x, and these are subscripts, the twos and the ones there. Okay, so 
y2 the way I have labeled the points is negative 3 minus y1 is 2 over x2 and again the way I've labeled them that's the 6 minus x1 which is the negative 3 so 6 minus the minus 3 in the denominator then we just do the arithmetic, minus 3 minus 2 is minus 5, 6 minus a minus 3 is 6 plus 3, which is 9, and that would be all there is to it. So, nothing to simplify, negative 5 ninths would be our slope. Alright, another formula that you need to memorize is what we call the point slope form for the equation of the line. So the point slope form recall was y minus y1 equals m times the quantity x minus x1 where when we make the substitutions into this formula the x and the y stay to define the equation and our substitution is for the value of the slope m and the ordered pair for the point which is x1 y1 so when we make our substitutions, we have y minus y1, so that's y minus y1 is 5, equaling our slope, which is 2, and then in parentheses, x minus x1, which is also 5. So that's actually the equation, but the directions tell us to write it in this special form, which we refer to as standard form. So that just means all the x's and y's on the one side set equal to some constant. So to obtain that form, we need to do some algebra. We'll recopy the y minus 5. Distribute this to... So 2 times x gives 2x, and 2 times negative 5, negative 10. Okay, I'm going to add 5 to both sides to get all the numbers on the right, because that's what the c represents in the standard form. So we would get y equals 2x minus 5. When we add 5 and negative 10, we get negative 5. And then I want to bring the x's to the left-hand side. And I'm just going to show this with the mental transposition. I'm going to draw a little arrow underneath here and indicate that I'm moving the 2x to the left. Now you could literally show subtract 2x from both sides, but we've mentioned this concept before. Moving the 2x to the left, whenever we cross over, the equal sign, we change the sign, so the 2x becomes a negative 2x, and I'm going to write that first, and then we have plus the y, because it's a positive y, and I have to separate the terms, is equal to a negative 5. And then that would be in standard form. Okay, and then basically combining those two concepts of number seven and number eight is question number nine where we want the equation of the line that passes through a pair of points if it passes through a pair of points find the slope first and then once we have the slope We'll use that slope, so that'll be just like question 7, finding the slope between two points. And then once we have that slope, 
we'll use the slope combined with either of the points to substitute into point slope form to obtain the equation. So the first step is the slope. You can label these as x1, y1, x2, y2 again. And our slope would be, okay, I'll show it literally, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So that's going to be, okay, again, the way I've labeled the points, y2 is 5. So 5 minus y1 is a minus 3 over x2, which is 4, minus x1, which is 2. So that gives us 5 minus a minus 3 is 5 plus 3, or 8. And 4 minus 2 is 2. And a better name for 8 over 2, of course, is 4. And now you could use either of the points. It doesn't matter which one you use. I'm going to use the 2, negative 3. We'll label it as x1, y1 again. But we're using that point combined with the slope to go to point slope form again. y minus y1 equals m times the quantity x minus x1. And so making our substitutions, remember that the x and the y stay. They define the equation, and we substitute our x1, y1 on our slope. And so therefore we have y minus y1 is a minus 3 equals, equals m, which we had found to be the 4 from down here, times the quantity x minus x1 is 2. And we're going to need, once again, standard form. Everything to one side set to the constant. So let's take advantage of the double negative here. We'll say y plus 3 equals, let's distribute this 4 like we did in the last example. Get 4x minus 8. Okay, if I subtract 3 from both sides, you can do your algebra any order or any way you like, but the reason why I like to do this is isolate the y first. So we get y is 4x minus 11, because that's actually y equals mx plus b form, slope-intercept form, uh, which sometimes is asked for. But then again, I'm going to show this transposition of the 4x, if I want to move it to the left, all that happens is its sign changes. So 4x subtracted from both sides, we get minus 4x, and then once again we need the plus in between with the y, equaling negative 11. Okay, so then... We'll finish this one, next one up, and then we'll take a break and do um, the next half of the exam. But this is the end of the work with the straight lines. It's solving a system. So there's two straight lines. Um, if you want, you can call this L1 and L2. Okay, so for, let's say for L1 x minus y equals 6. All right, it chose an example here where you could actually use the intercept method for both of these lines. And with the intercept method, we're just going to let x equal 0 find out what y is, and then let y equal 0 and find out what x is. So in this equation for line 1, if we let x equal 0, we get 0 minus y is 6. Minus y would be 6. That's a minus 1 in front of the y. So dividing by a negative 1, 
we get y is negative 6. So 0, negative 6 is a point. And then let me see if I let y equal 0. I think I'll do it right here. Then we get 0. Excuse me, we get... We're letting y equal 0. In this equation, x minus y is 6. So x minus 0 is 6. So x is 6. So we got 0 for y and 6 for x. Alright, so that's the first line. Actually, let's plot that now. Let's graph that. Now here you have to be real careful when you're using just graph paper like I am. 0 and negative 6 would be right here. And 6, 0 right here. And you do have to be a little bit careful when you're using graph paper. My math lab is kind of is easier sometimes because the points come out distinctly. But a pretty good sketch of the first line. Which again, I'm going to label it x minus y equals 6. Okay, and then we kind of separate this. And we'll do line 2 here. For line 2, we have x plus y is 8. Okay, I'm going to do the table again. Let x equal 0. Okay, this one makes kind of nice and easy because 0 plus y is 8. y would be 8, so it's 0, 8. And then we'll let y equal 0. And then we'll have x plus 0 is 8. So x is 8. And so we have y is 0, x is 8. Okay, so then plotting those... 0, 8, the y-intercept, and 8, 0, the x-intercept, and joining those two points. Here's my line, and I'll label that x plus y is 8. Okay, and we're looking for the common solution, which is the point of intersection. And that point of intersection right there is the, we could read it just from the graph, is 7, 1. So... Common solution is the point x is 7, y is 1. And nice thing is this one worked out neatly. You could verify that pretty much mentally here in the two equations. 7 minus 1 is 6 and 7 plus 1 is 8. Okay. Alright, so we'll cut it there for the first half. Um, another half to go, so we'll see you when you are ready for part two.